Damn, I really hope this new microphone works, because if it doesn't, man, that would trip me out sideways. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, welcome back to the Love Stitch Knits podcast. My name is Tierra. I am the host of the Love Stitch Knits podcast. You can find me on Instagram at the Love Stitch, Ralvery as Tierra Renee. All of these links are always in the bottom bar description thing um so you can talk to me chat with me and hello i guess um i know it's been a while it's been about a month since i've last come on here and spoke at all and reason being it's been very busy like painstakingly busy i like i promise you i tried to record this video maybe three times three times before I actually um before this time just because it's been a lot I had classes a family member got married so I was like the wedding coordinator for all that and just other personal life stuff that kind of got in the way and kind of put podcasting on the back burner which is really sad um because I love coming on here and talking with y'all but Honestly, I'm in a better space now, a better headspace to even come on here and chat with y'all, and I'm happy. But, yeah, I guess we'll get into it. The first thing we want to talk about, which we always talk about, is finished objects. And I have, because it's been such a long time since I came on here and spoke with you guys, I have a few finished objects, most of them being socks, but one of them being this sweater! So this sweater is the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Mae. I knit this in Melanie. You guys, I guess you guys saw me working on this as a whip. Maybe you didn't. Maybe I never got to podcast it and show it off. But um, I knit this in Strawberry Jam, a DK weight yarn from Cozy Cardigans, a.k.a. Melanie, a.k.a. Big Little Yarn Co. She has a podcast here on YouTube as well as... Um, she's on Instagram at Cozy Cardians, Cozy underscore Cardians, and Big Little Yarn Co. So this is how my, um, Cozy Classic Raglan ended up turning out, and I'm so happy. It's been blocked, which I never do, and I'm just so in love. Um, as obviously, um, it's cropped, very cropped. It was already a cropped sweater. I believe it was meant to, like, stop, like... In two inches but as a person with a very long torso who loves to wear mom jeans exhibit a um, I decided to make my sweater cropped as well um, that meaning so as in like I only knit like six stitches here and I did the waist decreases as well my ribbing is only the pattern calls for like a three inch ribbing on the cuffs and the hem and that's a no-no baby I don't like a big chunky like ribbing at all so I just did two inches and she's pretty much perfect like look at those raglan oh, what those raglan increases are you crazy and I think the neckline sits perfect um I was originally very stressed out and worried because I thought I cast because I like I cast it on and then I read the pattern where it said cast on loosely and they laughed I was like who da what no, no I didn't cast on loosely I cast on pretty tight but after like reading more into the pattern I read that like oh, shit. but I read more into the pattern and it was like most people saw that after blocking the neckline kind of stretched out a little bit which it did before it was like and I hate it. <laughs> I hated it. But now it's definitely like sitting pretty relaxed here. Um, as any true knitter would, they I messed up. I messed up on my sweater in a very funny way. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but somewhere in the direct middle of this sweater, um, there are increases where there shouldn't be, and there's also decreases where there shouldn't be. And I, that makes me laugh because it really helps me to like figure out which is the back and the front of my sweater, since there's not like a tag in it or anything. And who cares? Um, it blocked flat or anyways. Um, I also did a very quarter sleeve action going on here. I still did the decreases every inch for the 
sleeve for the fitted sleeve. I just ended up stopping it here because I thought it was like the perfect classic like length for a quarter leaf sweater. And yeah, I'm very happy with it. I'm so happy with this. It was, whew, it was knit so fast, like lightning speed. Like I didn't even give her a chance to breathe. I was watching Avatar while I was knitting this. So I was like, been watching Avatar, really in the zone. These stockinette stitches are flying off my needles. Um, I'd been knitting socks, so it was so nice to like work with a thicker weight yarn. And yeah, I'm in love. I'm in love with the yarn too. I ended up buying, originally I bought a lot of yarn for this project, but I ended up not using like, I want to say like 200 grams because I cropped the sweater. But meaning that 200 grams might be enough to make like a child size cozy classic for my child. And that's exciting. Um, and I'm and obviously like the craftsmanship is ridiculous on this yarn. I'm sorry I'm still talking about this, but um, like I said, the yarn is from Melanie and I didn't alternate skeins. These are all like, she sent me the yarn in like a bunch of 50 gram skeins, which was like so cute and funny, but uh, because it was because of like a supplier thing. But like, even though I use like a bunch of different 50 gram skeins, there's no serious pulling, there's no huge color differences, there's no like legit flashing. No, it, it melds perfectly and the color is so beautiful and the yarn is cozy and yeah, I'm just warm. I'm just a happy girl. So yeah, this is my cozy classic raglan by pattern by Jessie May. I definitely recommend knitting one. It's the easiest, simplest, most beautifully thoughtful like raglan sweater ever. So don't take my word for it. A lot of people knit this fingering and mohair held together, but I didn't want no fuzzy fuzzy. I don't want a lot extra. I'm doing all that with my other sweater and I'm still not happy. So. In usual fashion, we'll move right on in. Oh, wait, no, we're not even done talking about finished objects, baby. I went on that whole spiel about this sweater and didn't even decide I was going to show you guys all the socks I've made. Wild. So let's get right on into that. Um, I keep my socks in the box that used to keep all of the acquisitions, but acquisitions be getting out of hand really quickly. So socks have been moved. Hand knit sock box. Okay, so we'll go into socks I've made since in the past month. The first socks I want to show you guys is my Magic Toadstool socks. Um, these are technically unfinished since I have to like still, I don't think I'm ever going to ever get around to doing it, but put the little white dots in the little mushrooms, but I don't care. Um, these are my Magic Toadstool socks. The pattern is by Stone Knits. These are my first colorwork socks ever, and I'm incredibly, incredibly um, happy with them. I knit them in um, Coop Yarn Sock Yeah, Coop Knits Sock Yeah. Um, the body color is Crisso. This is Taffy by Hedgehog Farmer. Hedgehog. Hedgehog fiber. Um, the red is called Sin. The white is called Lenin. It was so fun. I made a lot of mistakes. You can tell, especially in this little guy. He little derpy and him too. But that's technically like the back of the sock. So like the front, they're kind of perfect. And this is also like kind of like my first vanilla sock technically as well because I this is my first time like knitting vanilla flat for the body which was like not fun because the yarn is not interesting and it took me a long time a surprisingly long time to get through with the body but my color work tension is perfect on these bad boys I'm extremely happy um yeah knit yourself some of these um the pattern maker stone knits on YouTube uh, not easy, uh, on Instagram she also has a pair of strawberry socks coming out soon you guys um keep your beepers open for her she definitely does make a lot of beautiful um color work socks if you're into that so yeah magic toadstool socks by Sonitz my next socks children that I would like to show you guys get you acquainted with are these ones, these ones are the Broken Seed Stitch Socks 
Uh, it's a free recipe on Ralphie. It's not really a pattern because it doesn't tell you how to like do the heels or the toes or anything. There's no actual real instruction. It just lets you know that you're supposed to be striping your yarn in pattern. And it's a broken seed stitch, so it's like you knit one whole round around. What? You knit one whole round, and then you come back on the next yarn color, the next row, and then you do the knit and purls. And this is what mine ended up coming out to. See the? So they're not, they're not same same. They're not matching socks. Well, cause they're matching socks because they came from the same ball, of course, and they're the same color. But I used a very um, a self striping yarn ball. Do I sound crazy yet? A self striping yarn ball to make these. The colors that I use for these socks is this is like a Zauber Ball crazy yarn ball thing. The color I believe is 1660. There's no like true name to her. And this is called from the Pretty Knitter? Pretty Knitty? Something like that. Um, the color is called Olive Cat Eye. Ooh, the light's changing. Uh, it's called like all of cat eye or something like that. So I used these two, held them to not held them together, but striped them in here. The um, I believe the knit and pearl rows were done in this, and then the whatever it doesn't matter if you read the pattern, it's free. You can have access to it on Ravelry. Um, trying to get away from using Ravelry is just really hard when everybody puts their patterns on Ravelry. Um, but yeah, it, it's pretty. It took a long time because it is a stripey uh, two ball of yarn effect going on here. But I love the way they came out. I think that they are extra spectacular, fantastic, gorgeous. Um, very warm too because they are textured. Man, the light is getting wild in here. I'm not against it. <laughs> so those are those. For this, uh, for the, I don't know, does it count as a finished object or... If you have one sock done, like that's one, I guess as a whip, a work in progress, because like a whole pair would be a finished object. But I guess this is like our weird segue into uh, works in progress. So right now I'm working on three different works in progress. Of course, one being a sock, me bringing in this finished object half because I finished one sock. Um, the sock my first actual vanilla sock that i've been working on um it's this one look at that are you inspired i'm inspired isn't she spooky absolutely uh this is a vanilla sock i'm kind of use kind of using um the i'm so basic sock pattern by summer lee knits she has Instagram, Ravelry, and a YouTube channel here. Um, the I'm So Basic Socks, it's kind of like a free pattern vanilla sock teaching you like all of the construction, but it's very descriptive, so I definitely recommend it. However, I'm used to doing certain things in my socks. Like I like doing a German twist cast on knit and purl for my cuffs. I like to do a 15 stitch cuff so it's about an inch and a half and the body I usually knit my socks to about five inches nothing too high no crazy or anything like that they're just a bit like a shorty crew I guess how does that what they call it shorty crew but look at the colors you guys look at the colors on this bad boy this is actually the this is knit out of um oh my god they're showing up so cool dang this is the best ever um the yarn that I'm using for this is called mm, it's a sock kit from holly press fibers the name of the sock kit is called eek espresso e e k exclamation point hyphen espresso because it's got like these halloween colors and then this brown in there so it's very mauve and muted and she's so handsome like I'm in love. The colors came out so well, and this is like the mini that you can get with it. I believe it either comes with a berry colored mini or the green, and I chose the green. And this is my first vanilla socks. So, of course, like I've never just knit around and around and around except for on those toadstool ones, and I still kind of struggle with tension and things because for whatever reason, I when I do this part here whatever this is called i end up knitting too tight for some reason i don't know why it happens but i start knitting really really tight i guess to overcompensate that i want my increases to look perfect 
I guess. But the, another thing I learned on this sock is that I've been making all my other socks too short. Oops. Uh, because those other socks are patterned with ribs, they end up stretching a little bit more. Because it's stock and net, it doesn't stretch, so it just has to be the right length. So I realized that I have to start making my socks a little, a little longer, which meant I finished the socks for whatever reason an inch too short. Like I finished my socks here and did the toe, tried it on, and then you could like see my toenail polish through the toe, and I was like, dumb. So I undid it, ripped back, came back, attached new yarn, finished the last inch, put that toe back on there, and now she's perfect in every way. I'm currently working on... Oh, sorry. I'm working on her sister here. Hopefully gonna have these done maybe hey, tomorrow. Um, I'm really working on it. But these are definitely um, very sexy. These are definitely right up my alley. I like, the, the thing is funny, here in the sides, like on the top, it's like fine, but here in the sides because it's like the gusset area, it's like more purple here on this side and on this side it's like more orange so she's definitely funny um but no they fit perfect and i love them so i definitely recommend the i'm so basic sock pattern to knit some socks for um to to learn how to knit socks and um definitely recommend the yarn dyer like she she does a lot of these like super nice variegated they stripe and they make such pretty on their own like you don't have to work hard the yarn shines so beautifully like are you telling me these are not autumnal as heck or what like i'm just so happy to have them um so that's a work in progress and we'll do the next one which is quite the doozy it's not really a doozy it's just a lot of pieces I'm working on the, I believe, oh god, let me not do this wrong. Let me just look it up really quick. The, 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 I feel like Spongebob, you know, episode of Spongebob, where he's like, I'm trying to write his essay, he's like, the, Ooh. ah, it's called The Patrick Pullover, it's by Shayna K. Salmon, she's um on Instagram as aka Shayna, she, Got some help from Two of Wands. Alexis, um, Alexis from Two of Wands, uh, helped her to design her very first sweater pattern. We are excited. We love a good black designer. She's a black woman out here designing sweaters. We love it. The pattern is not perfect. Um, it's her first time running a pattern. Give her the creds, but the project is perfectly beautiful. Basically, it's just a bunch of squares, like not too many like 24, maybe 30, 32 squares that you knit in bulky weight yarn in different colors and you kind of just end up sewing them all together at the very end and then you do a side panel cuff hem neckline situation thing going on with a worsted weight yarn and it makes you like a really fabulous sweater. I'll definitely like pop in kind of like a preview picture but if you can see on my phone this is like the gist of it all this is kind of like the this is bad don't pay attention to any of this but it, no it's, it's beautiful it's very rustic it's very big sweater um i'll show you guys what color i'm going to be using what colors i am and what yarns as well that i'm using for the patchwork sweater um the first one here that i have this is the two of wands hue plus me uh, 80% acrylic, 20% wool. The color is Terra. This is Terra. It's brownish gray. This one is called Bellini. It's a dusty pink. Not to get mixed up with the dusty rose, I think, color that they also have. This one is spicy. She's a brownish, reddish sienna, a burnt sienna kind of thing going on. This one is Fatigues. She's gray, green, green grayish green this is this one is Rowan big wool in the color vintage and um I don't have the yarn ball for it because I used up the entire ball of yarn for this uh color I don't know I think it's called natural but it's also Rowan big wool and chunky so these are the colors if you can this is not going well this is kind of what I've got going on for my uh, sweater. She's going to be very 
um, very cute, I think, with the purple and the red as pops, with the pink and the gray and the brown kind of neutralizing everything. So far, I have the squares done of the green, the red, and the natural color. So that means I just have to do the pink, the purple, and the brown. So once I have all six of these colors done, then I will be able to go in with... with the color that I'm using for the main part, like all the body part, which is, I'm using, I'm gonna use uh, the Rowan Pure Wool Super Wash in the color Ivory. So it's white, it's very white, much whiter than the natural color being used, if you can tell, for the other part. I actually really like this yarn. I didn't think I would. It's not like, I don't know, like it's very comfy. I'm not gonna lie, like I wouldn't mind like an entire sweater out of this. So it's cool to be working with it for the first time. Rowan's got really good yarn. It's kind of expensive though, $14 for 100 grams. Ah, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. How many yards? 219 yards. That's not bad. Um, definitely recommend. So yeah, that was that work in progress. I know it's kind of like a shit show right now. There's not really much to show for it except for a bunch of random squares and a whole bunch of yarn falling out of balls. Um, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to work on that. But this brings me on into my next work in progress. But this one is a spoiler. So if you are currently knitting the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along Shawl Slip Travaganza 2020 and you do not want to see what it's starting to look like but or you are planning on to knit it and you don't want to see what it's going to look like skip this part I'm gonna leave a little note where you can skip to if you do not want to see it but if you do not care and you've seen it and you want to see what mine is looking like I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you here's a spoiler alert please don't hate me you have been warned so I will show you what my shawl's looking like Okay, um, this is what is happening so far with my Slip Stravaganza Stephen Westnitz Make Along 2020. Um, as you might know if you were knitting this, the first section was these like hexagons. So I used, originally I was using a mm, kit, a shawl kit from La Bien Ami. We had the whole thing with, if you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I was not digging that fourth color and I still don't like it. Um, and I am using a different fourth color, which is this deep purple, which is Berry from 29 Stridges Studio. I actually really like this part of the shawl. I think what I don't like about this part is that I used the white here, but it ended up making the shawl look kind of dingy if you know what I mean um yeah this is like <laughs> the way I have this is like halfway on scrap yarn and halfway on my needles still so it's kind of like wild but you can see this isn't blocked either so you can see like there's like some diamond action going on in there I ended up picking up and using um in here this is umeboshi umeboshi from big little yarn co because I didn't want to use the white anymore so I use that instead for this part, and I actually really like it. I think it definitely gave it the color spiciness that I like to see. So yeah, that's how it's going. Um, this is a big, this is a big shawl. Like I don't wear shawls, but like I can tell that this thing is going to be gigantic. It's a decent size right now. I mean, like all blocked out, it should be a little longer. But I think that there's still some more clues that have to go on with like the holes in here because I think the next and even like the next section has like these little short row like diamond things triangle things going on so no 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 it's not bad it's not bad she's not bad she's not ugly uh, just not my style I think definitely gonna become a gift but that's a work in progress definitely a monster um, definitely making me want to rip my brains out when it comes to picking colors. Like, I'm not somebody who gets confused by color often. Obviously, you guys have great taste in color, and arranging colors hasn't ever been a problem for me. But because you never know what the next section is going to look like, this is kind of hard. And I wouldn't say that, like, mystery knit alongs are not for me. Uh, I would just say that this <laughs> is not working out. Because sometimes, I mean, you win some, you lose some. I ain't really losing 
because this is my first shawl you guys this is my first shawl i've ever made ever and all this product has ever done for me ha is doing for me right now is inspiring me to make a shawl that i will love um i'm actually hoping to cast on a find your fade soon something with a lot of garter stitches um and a lot of color play like actual color play like watching colors stripe and all these things like my stash is not gigantic by any means possible but trying to use up a lot of it will be really fun um to do in a find your fate so yeah this is what's going on with my um mystery knit along if you're doing this sweater or this shawl as well i want to see like i want to see what you do in on yours so yeah definitely um if you can find me on instagram at the love stitch tag me in your post showing off your scar because I want to see but just make sure that you you know you're polite you use the mystery knit along picture thing and the front or that your yarn choices in the front to kind of like you know not spoil it for your followers but if you want to show me you can even send me a picture through stories okay guys final final section of the podcast like we always do I hope this is not whatever man final section of the podcast as y'all know it and I love it acquisitions for acquisitions i have a decent amount of things to show you as it has been a month and you guys know that your girl is a shopaholic and she has a problem um but it's not it's not like i'm happy i'm excited to show you guys what i have i always am like i'm always excited to like share new brands and like share you guys colors and all these things like what's inspiring me right now something that came in the mail in the past month that i've been really excited about that i'm so excited to even show you guys right now is from Kate at Red Door Fibers. She had her Avatar The Last Airbender yarn collection come out. I went on for the pre-orders. I spent way too much money. Um, but whatever. It's like very, you know, very sentimental show for me. If you haven't seen it, it's about a boy who um, wakes up in an iceberg to find out that he is the last of his kind and he must try to figure out how to be the last of his kind while also being the most powerful being in the world so he's 11 years old it's a lot of work he's got two friends from um a different tribe who a bunch of people he does he's growing he's learning it's about friendship it's about love it's about um integrity honor truth trust compassion there's so many like boom 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 there's so many like themes touched on in this show it is incredible if you haven't watched it i definitely recommend it no it is not necessarily a children's show just because it's a cartoon please give it a chance um definitely recommend and we'll go into what I personally purchased from Kate. Woo! So happy. Um, the first thing I'll show you is this sock set right here. This one is called Kiyoshi Warriors. Um, look at, oh, I'm holding it up again, I guess. This is Kiyoshi Warriors. So here you see a beautiful dark green. It's, it's, oh God, you guys do you like when I talk about colors because I like when I talk about colors um she got green some gold in here this is modeled after the Kiyoshi warriors who are characters in the avatar series um this little boy right here is called katana uh yeah definitely going to become a pair of socks probably just vanilla maybe something spicy maybe a little bit of a three by two rib six by one rib something sexy you know um just something to sh really show off the colors going on here that's kiyoshi warriors uh the next color i have to show you this one is called that's rough buddy it comes from a scene in the show that's where the saying comes from you'll have to watch if you want to get the gist but it is a very powerful statement to me it means a lot to me these kids are going through so much and they can't even express grievances towards each other because they have all been through so much individually and honestly that's rough buddy is the best way they can communicate sometimes it's perfect it's a beautiful scene i definitely recommend it this is the most beautiful periwinkle blue it's soft it's so pretty the next color i'm showing you this one is very 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 important it's called fire lord it's got dark reds, orange, some black speckles in it. This skein is actually not mine. It's to go to a new home to Javi. Hi, Javi. Um, I miss you. This is going to go to you. Uh, this is yours. So that's very beautiful. I saw this and I ended up getting myself one on the DK base, but then I also love fingering so much that when Kate was releasing these yarns and afterwards she was doing like one of a kinds 
aka a oopsies like she just made mistakes because like what the hell people make mistakes um so my skin was over there hanging on the wall but it has like red speckles the difference here is that mine has like red speckles in it so you know i definitely had to like like it has more like red speckling going on here don't focus on me focus on the pretty yarn yeah she's got some red speckling going on in her and i think that's very handsome I also picked up this skein. This is another one of a kind. This one is called Dancing Dragon, also from the show Avatar. Um, I don't remember why it's a one of a kind. Maybe it came out too orange or something, but I think it's perfect, so I don't even... What? Mistake? Who? Where? I don't know her. Like, Kate, you're perfect. You're wonderful. You make beautiful yarns. Um, don't let anybody come for you, sweetheart. You're perfect. Alright, so that's pretty much what I got for the Avatar The Last Airbender collection from Red Door Fibers. Thank you for watching that. Those yarns are beautiful. They mean a lot to me. Yes. So then we'll go into other kinds of things that I've purchased or that I've gotten. Um, I did order more than just the Espresso colorway from Holly Press Fibers. I also ordered these as well. This is her Woodland Christmas colorway. So it's kind of like the same deal going on with the speckling. It's got brown, but then it's got this beautiful mauved out, dark, juicy, yummy, delicious red going on. And it comes with this beautiful mini. So I'm going to be making a pair of vanilla socks for Christmas. And that's coming soon. It's also it's so pretty. What the heck? So good. And the last thing. Oh, two things. Last two things. Um, this one is from Casual Fashion Queen. The colorway is called Pesco's. I think it was like kind of like a one of a kind. It's like a limited quality, a limited time yarn. It's like this purple with green and pinks in it. And I think it's gorgeous. Don't know what it's for. It's going to be for something. And then I have this Magpie Fibers. This color is called Bijou. And I just thought it was very pretty. And it's extremely soft because it has cashmere in it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like all my yarny acquisitions. I know it's a lot as it always is. I have some non-yarn acquisitions but still yarn related acquisitions. Um, so for some non-yarn acquisitions, I have a few things. Well, this is kind of like, I guess this does count as one thing. But from Twill and Print Co., um, I ordered her keychain, which is kind of like a, a knitter's multi-tool, where you can have like a one inch and centimeters ruler here in the middle so you can measure your stitches per inches. This is a bottle opener, and then it has like these little holes here in the bottom so you can like attach your stitch markers and this is like a yarn threader thing and I also purchased this, these these don't, things don't come together but these ones do these are row counters I've never had row counters but I always have problems around uh, counting rows so that's very exciting um, this pink one with the moth on it this is really hard to show I'm so sorry um, this pink one is actually magnetic so you can put um, like a needle on there and it won't fall off that's a hypothetical and then I also got the matching like witchy moth um stitch marker so yeah that was um this is an exciting purchase for me because oh I, I have problems keeping my stitch markers and I actually use the removable ones a lot so to be able to just hook them on there and have space for seven stitch markers is very useful and helpful all about that multifunctional life that's exciting um if you can hear me really well it's because i got a new microphone for my camera that's really exciting as well i also have um fabric because you guys i made something um another non um so i guess like another like non knitting acquisition is my sewing machine I did not intend to buy this sewing machine, actually. Um, I had purchased something a little small, real rinky-dink $30 sewing machine um, off of Amazon. And I opened it and I put it right back in the box because I realized that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it all the way. And that means I'm going to go spend $100 on a sewing machine. And it wasn't that bad. Um, this is the Singer Tradition. Um, I was trying to choose between the Singer Start and the Singer Tradition, but they just happened to be the same price at Joanne, so I just ended up getting with the Tradition. And, y'all, I made something, so I guess this does count as a finished object. Um, 
what the hell, y'all? Um, if you've seen it on my stories, you guys know that I'm talented. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, you might have seen this on my stories, but I went ahead and knit, knit, sewed, sew, sewed, sew, sewed, sewed myself a project bag. So this is the project bag I sewed for myself. This is the Esme pattern. It's on Etsy. Um, oh God, was this easy, but like quite the learning process. Um, you know me, I'm an ambitious crafter. I don't half-ass anything. I dive straight in and make sure I try to hit all the points and challenge myself as hard as possible because what beginner is doing a zipper on their first project? I don't know, me, because I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> But I'm so happy about how this came out. So it's kind of got this trapezoid body situation going on here. It has a zipper and a little pull tab as well here. So you can unzip her. Um, in the inside, so the outside is this, um, oh my god, hold on. Whew. So the outside is this like magic mushroom pattern where it's got mushrooms and crystals and snails and and ferns and i love 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 this fabric it's a cotton canvas the inside has this white pressed golded um pinstripe the pattern came with instructions to add let me take my yarn out the pattern came with instructions to also do a boxed bottom and also put little pockets in her um it is even in like what and so you can i'm like so shook that i made this you guys um you can fold the bottom the top of the bag down so you end up with like a bucket it's a square which i think is so functional and gorgeous i'm inspired y'all like this is this was so much fun to do i did it in like a i did it in a few hours it probably took me like four hours because i didn't know what i was doing no, I, I'm so happy to like have something else to be proud of in my crafty kind of situation. This pro this bag is easily can easily hold like two to three balls of yarn, the start of a shawl, um a hat. A, a bunch of a shawl actually if you could just shove the whole thing in there. You know, you can definitely carry around stuff in this bag. It's really exciting. Um, I want to make all kinds of stuff now. And I definitely did order a bunch of different fabrics to try with. I ordered canvas. I ordered um, some pink, some moody, some plain. And I just, I'm just excited. Like, it's so exciting to find a new hobby and find out that you're kind of decent at it. Because I was scared. Like, I was scared at it. Uh, I'm scared of it. So, yeah, that's, that's sewing for you. That's some good sewing. Um... Definitely pay attention for like maybe some some selling going on here. Maybe some giving away. Because you guys are fantastic. You guys have been here with me listening to me chat for hours about knitting and yarn and all these other things. And it's super duper therapeutic and exciting and fun for me to be able to talk with y'all about this and know that someone out there listens and cares um and i don't know like thank you guys thank you guys so much this is the end of it i think i don't have much else to show you guys i showed you guys a whole bunch because i miss about a, a month of podcasting hopefully there's not any more like super long breaks between the next one i'm trying to be more adamant about this stuff i'm trying to be more what, what do you say consistent I'm trying to be more consistent with being here and talking to y'all so yeah thank you guys so much thank you for being here so like i said in the beginning my name is tiara you can find me on instagram at the love stitch you can find me um on ralvery as tiara renee you can hit me in the comments in the comments tell me anything Com tell me about something you know what tell me about a product that you've made that you didn't love but you decided to finish it anyways because you spent so much time and money on it and then what did you end up doing with the project did you end up frogging it back anyways or did you gift it away i want to know like tell me about your disasters <laughs> like i love to hear um about all sorts of things if you have any more good like um yarn dyer recommendations who are kind of similar to holly fiber 
Holly, Holly Press Fibers. Like, I want to know too because I'm really into that. Um, I guess, like, the colorways and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, you're fantastic. You're wonderful. You're lovely. You're, fan you're, you're the best at everything you do. Don't let anybody tell you you cannot do something. You can only do what you say you can do um, and what you want to do. Like, I promise you, you're the best. I love you so much. Someone out there loves you. Someone out there is thinking about you. Definitely I am.